Hi there everyone, welcome to the Royal Astronomical Society Library, one of my favourite rooms in the world. This is the domain of Dr. Sean Prosser here. Sean, we're about to talk about someone who puts my love of the moon to shame. That's right, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about John Russell. He was a member of the Royal Academy. He was a society portrait painter, but he was also really interested in the moon. From his 20s onwards, he had that obsession. Okay, now take a look at these treasures. Can we start with that one over there? Yes. All right. This is obviously a globe of the moon. Half of the moon's been painted. What are we looking at? This is a hand-painted lunar globe made by John Russell, probably in the late 18th century. Until the space missions of the 1950s and 60s, we only were able to see one side of the moon. So any lunar globe will only have half of the surface illustrated. It's just a really beautiful study of the moon, very precisely measured, because he used not just a telescope, but also a, a micrometer to get really accurate observations of the moon and to render that using his artistic training. There's a quotation from Neville Maskelyne in Latin. Neville Maskelyne at the time was the Astronomer Royal at Greenwich. And the very rough paraphrase of this is saying, there are so many people whose achievements are reflected on the moon in the form of having craters named after them. Isn't it a shame there's no crater named after John Russell? So that's a major accolade from one of the major astronomers of the day. We have one of a series of three studies of the moon in Pastel made by John Russell. Pastel might seem like a really inexact medium, but he's so skilled. It looks really soft, but it's really detailed at the same time. It's just an absolutely beautiful portrait of the moon. He was doing it because he was really interested. He would have had his own income from portrait painting, but actually, as you can see from this globe with the brass apparatus, he did manage to you know, create a publication based on his observations called the Selenographia. It has you know, the publication date, the patent date, explaining that this is an apparatus called Selenographia. It, it was accompanied with a written guide to show not only what the moon looks like, but how it moves in the sky. This apparatus is designed to show libration, which is the slight wobble that the moon appears to have as it's moving through the night sky. We will yeah. put an example of libration on the screen yeah. right now, because it, it allows us to see more than 50% of that face that's facing us, doesn't it? That's right, that yes. slight wobble. Yeah. I can't help noticing there's another object here kind of bolted on, and this is the Earth, is it? Yes, it's a, it's a tiny scale model of the Earth, obviously much, much closer to the moon in this um, apparatus than it is in real life. And, and smaller, obviously. It's very much smaller. It's just a, a way of showing the movement, the motion and the, the features of the moon. A globe representing the visible surface of the moon, constructed from triangles, measured with a micrometer, and accurately drawn and engraved from a long series of telescope observations by John Russell. Not many of these were published, and even fewer of these Selenographia globes were published with the full brass apparatus. So it, we're, we're fortunate to have this. How does the society use this? We sometimes bring it out to show people like you. We bring it out for open house. Mm. Um, we have a third globe, which is on loan to the Herschel Museum in Bath. John Russell didn't only paint scientific figures of the day, such as William Herschel. He was a collaborator. And we have a letter from John Russell to William. This is written in 1799, so this is um, two years after the Selenographia was published in 1797. Okay. I may by this time conclude that you are returned from Bath and I hope Mrs Herschel, yourself and family are well at Slough and I beg my respectful compliments. On your return, I hope you found the telescope, etc. arrived safe, concerning which I troubled Miss Herschel with a letter as advised by Mr Professor Wilson. I hope my grateful feelings are known, which have been excited by your unmerited favours. The loan of the admirable instrument, now returned, joined to the honour of your countenance and favour respecting my lunar publication, permit me once more to be troublesome in saying that I am thankful. I have the honour and pleasure to be, dear sir, your ever very much obliged and obedient humble servant, John Russell. They really go over the top with the manners, don't they? Yeah. They're very, very polite. But how's that? If you're going to borrow a telescope from someone, 
Yeah. Herschel's a pretty impressive one. Yeah. And I like that he's not home, but he still gets to talk to Carolyn Herschel, yes. who's a pretty big deal as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for showing us these moon globes. I could look at them all day. I'd love to have one in my office, but uh, I think I probably couldn't afford one. <laughs> Let's have a look at the other end of the piece of wood. This has got a little label on it. It says, a piece of the tree at Woolsthorpe from which Sir Isaac Newton saw the apple fall, which suggested to him the theory of gravitation. There's a big claim there. 